This is the last upgrade that we have to do to this old CJ's cooling system. We're going to get it done, take this old granddad for a ride, so let's cue the intro. Before we start the video, a quick disclosure. This is the second time I've had problems with my remote wireless mic. I'm getting some static. Right now I don't know what's causing it. These wireless mics, they're expensive, so I don't want to replace it until I really understand what's wrong and I've been trying to figure that out. I managed to clean up the audio so it's moderately annoying only in a few spots. I hope you stay to the end because this was a fun story to make. In this episode we're going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to install these felt air deflectors. So let me show you how I do it. Now the first issue that I need to deal with are these flanges that the felt strip mount to. Now nearly all four of these are twisted or bent in some way and I need to straighten them out so that these pieces of felt actually fit flush to them. The other thing I have to do is a lot of the staples or many of the staples or most of the staples are still here. I think the first thing that I'm going to do is try and pull all the staples. I'll show you a couple of those then, then I'll do the rest of them off camera. Now I have four tools that I think I'm going to use trying to pull those staples. The first is a couple of small screwdrivers, a jackknife, and then I'm also going to, if I need to, use these, these vice grips. Now the jackknife seems to work pretty good getting, getting those staples started. It's thin enough that I can get underneath the staple. And then the biggest screwdriver helps bend them even a little bit more. <clears throat> so I went and got a pair of needle nose pliers and those are working a lot better getting getting those staple legs straightened out. Alright, so you get the idea. Let me get the rest of them off and I'll come back and show you how I straighten out those flanges. Alright, I've just got two more to get out. It wasn't all that hard doing it. But it probably took me a good 10 minutes to, to get them all. I ended up having to use the needle nose to straighten these legs out. And some of these staples, they're so rusty that they're actually breaking when I bend them. That's the last two. Now the other thing that I have to do is straighten these flanges out and some of them are bent really pretty pretty severely and this is one here. I'm going to try and do this using the vice grips but I want to be careful because I don't want to mar up the paint too much. And at the end of the day, I don't know that it has to be all that perfect, but certainly straight enough that those felt deflectors will fit into the radiator properly. All right, that's that. I'm going to go back and use a hammer and, and hard hardwood dowel or hardwood block in order to kind of finish those up a little bit. And this one actually changes directions. It's bent in and then it changes directions and it bends over the other way. It's kind of interesting. So the other thing I want to do is come up against this hard maple block. And see if I can't make that. At least as straight as possible. That looks really good. All right. 
All right, so same as, same as before, I'm gonna do the rest of this off camera and then I'll bring you back. So the last thing I'm doing is using sort of a mid-sized C-clamp that has a nice pivoting head on it. And I'm using it a little bit like a, like a vise. And I'm able to put a little pressure on these and then bend them in a way that it both straightens out the kinks and then also allows me to sort of manipulate this a little bit without putting a lot of huge force or stresses on it. And it works really, really pretty well. That. Let me take you around the edge of this and show you those flanges and how straight I was able to get them. The next thing I've got to do is mount these felts and the first thing I got to do is figure out how they go on and there's three of them. There's this top one and then this, these two that go down the side. And frankly, at this moment, I'm not entirely sure which way they go, so I need to figure that out. So I'll come right back as soon as I have an idea how to do this. All right, so I couldn't seem to find a way through this. The, the felt was really thick. The shapes that they had cut from the factory just didn't seem to work anywhere in this Jeep. So, so I'm not sure if this felt is really original to a CJ. It's set on the packet MB. Usually the MBs and the CJs are very, very close, especially those old, early CJs. So I had to modify this simply to get this thing to fit the way I'd like it to fit. So I literally trimmed the ends so that they would fit into the, into the contours and recesses of, of the grill. The other issue I had was that the felt was really thick, so I couldn't seem to get the staples to go through the felt through the sheet metal and then have enough to bend over. So what I did is I took it down to my shop and, and I made, made a clamp system where I literally ran these through my bandsaw and then split them in half. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you a couple of these staples going through. And I learned this trick from a friend of mine down in Charleston, South Carolina that has his own YouTube channel, uh, Haynes Garage. So coming through the back side using the existing holes, Scott just simply came in and found found that hole and using a sewing needle a pretty stiff sewing needle he came through and poked a hole all the way through the through the felt you got to kind of hold it in place and don't get don't get stabbed and that way that hole gets created in the felt and then just using the staples, you can find your way back through. And once you're through, then I'm just using a set of needle nose pliers that have a nice radius on the tip and using those to, to start bending that over. I'm sure when the factory originally did this, they had some kind of a method that was a lot more set up to do this without going through all of this. I'm sure it just punched all the holes with a giant staple gun. All right, then when I got it so it looks reasonably well bent, then I'll take the vice grips and do a final crimp on it. All right, so I have 16 more of these to do and I'm not gonna make you sit through all of those. So let me get them done and then I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like. We're done. This was neither fun nor was it easy. Trying to find all those little holes to get those staples in, it was just time consuming. Let me show you what it looks like up close. And then the next job that we're gonna do is put this grill back on the Jeep.
All right, the job's done, the grill's installed. I need to get the Jeep off the skates down onto the ground. We're gonna take this for a ride. I think I'm really happy with this. Uh, this is the first time I've been able to drive that Jeep since I've owned it without it overheating coming up a hill. So I think we've mostly captured all the issues. There's one more thing that I want to do. I want to check the timing to make sure there's no issues with that. So this was really neat. This thing didn't run more than 190 coming up the hill and I'm, and I'm really pleased with that. Now, that said, the day's about 55, 60 degrees. It's not 90 like it would be in the middle of the summer, but we'll see how that all comes out as we progress through the summer. So that ends most of the work on the Jeep for now. The next time we get together, I wanna to go back to doing some work on the RT3360 Yamaha. I wanna put that front fender back on. We still need to get some tires for it. I've got some more in the garage, so subscribe if you haven't, like the video, ring the bell, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.